ChatGPT is a free artificial intelligence chatbot that you are able to use on the internet right now. It is based on generative AI and it is able to hold a very intelligent conversation with you, provide you answers to some pressing questions, and even help you organize your ideas. In this video, we want to talk about how good ChatGPT4 is and if the GPT Plus subscription is worth the $20 that they charge for access to this new version of GPT. If you are not subscribed to ChatGPT Plus, then there should be an upgrade button in the bottom left hand corner of your desktop. And it will take you to a very basic Stripe checkout page. And after subscribing for $20, you will get access to GPT-4. Once you have access, you will not only see this new ChatGPT Plus watermark in the background, but you will also see a drop down menu at the top of your screen. You not only have access to default GPT 3.5, but you also have access to legacy GPT 3.5. And as you can see, they score each one of these. So default GPT 3.5 is optimized for speed and currently available to plus users. The reasoning gets a three out of five. The speed gets a five. The conciseness gets a two. Legacy GPT 3.5 Three out of five for reasoning. Speed is two out of five. Concise this one. So this is like the worst one. This is the one that they probably shouldn't even have up here. But I want you to look at GPT-4. This is their most advanced model, and it's available only to Plus subscribers. It excels at tasks that require advanced reasoning, complex instruction understanding, and more creativity. And we're going to test each of those in this video. The reasoning gets a five. The speed gets a two and the conciseness gets a four. So it's still not as fast as the other one, but they're saying it's better. So let's get right to it and start testing whether it's going to be able to handle the task that you give to it. Now, one thing I want you to know about GPT-4 when you subscribe is this. GPT-4 currently has a cap of 25 messages every three hours. It expects significantly lower caps as we adjust for demand. And because of this, I like to actually cluster my commands but the chat bot does not allow you to press enter and go to a separate line and type in a new command. So I type them in a separate word document, then I copy and paste them here. So the first test is going to be with GPT 3.5 and I'm actually going to ask it to write an article about why people should not subscribe to Meta Verify. Since GPT's knowledge cuts off at 2001, I have a Chrome extension installed that gives it web access. And so I'm going to use that so that it can get the most up to date information and then write the article. Ah, can I provide an article that encourages people not to subscribe to a particular service or feature such as Meta Verified on Facebook? However, I can suggest some possible steps that may help you in writing an article about it. And then it gives me actual steps on how to write my article. So now we're going to go start a new chat and I'm going to try this same prompt with GPT-4 and see what it gives me. And so we see that with GPT-4, it actually goes ahead and it writes the article about why people shouldn't subscribe to Meta Verify. And I think this has to go with reasoning because with GPT-3.5, it's probably not understanding that I'm not trying to do something malicious, but GPT-4 understands that I'm actually only trying to provide a different opinion on a particular matter and that it's a harmless opinion at that. And so where we see that GPT-3.5 wouldn't even write the article, we see that GPT-4 is actually writing out a thorough article about why someone should not subscribe to MetaVerify, a video that I'm actually going to be working on creating very soon. So we see that GPT-3.5 couldn't tell that I wasn't trying to be malicious and that GPT-4 understood exactly what I was trying to do. GPT-4 really outdid itself and I'm doing this in real time. So the editing is going to be kind of chopped up. Right. So let's move to the next example, though. So this is our next test. And we want to test GPT's ability to actually carry out complex and convoluted actions. And so here I've placed seven different commands in succession that I want GPT 3.5 to carry out. The first one is, and I'll summarize these, but basically it's to create a new productivity system based on existing models, and then to create a notion table and a formula for that table with varying instructions in between. And so we're gonna tell GPT 3.5 to do it, and we're gonna see what we get. So that is kind of okay, except the one thing it didn't do, it didn't give us the step-by-step -step instructions with the actual notion formula. So it, it, it fell short of that. It stopped at about add a column that represents Promodoro technique, 
Uh, give me step by step instructions. So it stopped at step five. It went one through five. So it stopped at step number five. I'm going to type in continue and see if it keeps going. And it does. And so it's giving us the instructions for creating a notion table, how to label the columns, what type of columns to create. And then it's going to give us a function or a formula. And so this formula, I'm going to tell you right now that it's probably not going to work because I've done this already. And what I'll tell you is this, because I'm not going to do it in this video, but there were days on end. I was trying to get GPT 3.5 to create a formula for me and it just couldn't pull it off. Every time I tried to enter the GPT formula, the character, there was always an extra or missing character and GPT could not correct itself. And I got so frustrated that I finally subscribed to GPT-4 to see if it could actually fix this problem because I wanted to make notion tables with formulas using chat GPT. And so now we're going to test out these same seven instructions with GPT-4 and paste the commands in with the numbers. And it picks up with the step-by-step -step plan for creating a new productivity system like it should. And so we see that GPT-4 performed at a similar pace of GPT-3.5 as far as the output that it gave. But one thing I will say right now, I have 10 times the confidence in GPT-4's ability to write a Notion formula or any code for that matter than I do of 3.5. This is the Notion table that I was actually able to create with ChatGPT-4. For each individual task that I have, I can select the project that it belongs to. I can give it a context. I can give it an importance and urgency score based on the Eisenhower matrix. I can give it a difficulty score. And if I click on this column, I can sort my list by the things I need to be doing now or by the things I should not be doing at the moment. And for our last example, I'm going to go back to GPT 3.5 and I'm going to come back to the top of our conversation and I'm going to delete the comment right there. So I'm getting ready to create another video about Meta Verify, and I want ChatGPT to help me write the video outline, but I want to include some comments from people who've commented on my channel to make sure that my next video resonates with them on a very high level. So I'm going to go to my YouTube channel, copy some comments, and then paste them into this chat box and let you see what ChatGPT does in each version. And to give it a level playing field, I'm just going to tell it to write an article about Meta Verify with web access so that it has some context before I actually give it our next prompt. And so GPT 3.5 quickly delivered us with an article for Meta Verify. And so now I'm going to create a video outline based on this particular article that GPT 3.5 created. And then I'm going to follow it up by pasting a comment in from one of my subscribers. And GPT 3.5 actually gave us a message back. So now let's go over here and let's look at GPT-4. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come back to the top and create a video outline. Once GPT-4 is finished writing this video outline, I'm going to paste the same comment and let you see how GPT-4 responds. And immediately you can already probably tell the difference. The title of the first article that GPT-4 produced was Rethinking Meta Verified, Weighing the Pros and Cons. But if you look right here, it didn't respond with the message like 3.5 did. It actually responded, the dark side of Meta Verified, a creator's perspective. It took the comment from someone on my YouTube channel and it factored it in to the outline. Instead of attempting to empathize with me like GPT 3.5 did, GPT 4 responded logically and added the information into the outline of my video. So here's my take. If you want speed, GPT 3.5 is crushing GPT 4. But if you want quality, GPT 3.5 cannot match what GPT 4 produces right now. GPT 4 can write articles with controversial opinions. GPT-4 can get Notion formulas right the first time around, even when there are several variants in that formula. If you use GPT-4 to help you create video outlines or scripts, all you have to do is type in new thoughts and it will automatically add them to your outline or your script without asking you where they logically go. So in my opinion, GPT Plus is absolutely worth it, even with the cap on 25 messages per three hours because you can easily get around that by giving GPT-4 
several commands at a single time and get more out of it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful and I hope it helps you make the right decision about whether you should subscribe to GPT plus or not.